going to find yourself getting packed by multiple cars, so Max and Dylan are on. So you are in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting a weird, but Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Vavani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Harley, Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. And I would say it's not the best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car rig. Really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately, isn't it? What's going on? In at turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the out pedal, and unfortunately he's dropped him all the way down the order. But Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Dan Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be here that earlier on as well. Typical, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. You love the slipstream jutting towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him third. Yeah, Barani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Pipe's pushed more and forward up ahead. He's got out of line. Is now Pipe going to have a go at Werrell? Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin, Burma down Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's in such trouble. He's not on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. Moving on to the back end of Bill Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that, that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh, watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now?
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's still start trouble. He's not on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the JPB Clio Cup once more for round four from Oran Park. I am James Parvo, going to be joined in the booth by Nathan Richards once again. Welcome in, everybody in YouTube chat already. Lone B17, Phil, across the pond, LM Sim Racing. Thank you so much for joining us. 2.6 kilometers here this evening, and a race circuit that no longer exists. It is currently got a housing estate on it in australia it is unfortunately closed down in 2010 this circuit still a great circuit to use for the cleos that we've got at the moment but it does not exist anymore unfortunately right let's bring you up the standings let's start off with the rookie standings currently dylan da costa is out in front on 364 points with ludovic jure on 355 david clasper on 329 keon palmer on 27 and three and then you've got Rob Williams on two three seven, Chris Barnes on one eight five, and Ewan Stitchbury on one one one. In the team standings at the moment, virtual drivers by TX3 out in front over Blade Designs who jumped Team Radline last week. So Team Radline and a team of John McCutcheon and Luke Maxwell on 419. Sim Stickers in fourth. JBB Esports in at fifth. Goldwing Motorsports in sixth. Kraken Racing in seventh. SRL eighth. And Photo Media down in ninth place. In the overall standings. So the overall championship. Dylan DaCosta is out in front with Sam Van Olst in second. Ludovic Jure in third. Then you've got Wayne Palmer and Luke Maxwell. Maxwell, both of them up positions over David Clasper with Deck Craver in seventh. Stu Gibbons in eighth. Kian Palmer and John McCutcheon in ninth and tenth. Dan Williams and Rob Williams. Uh, Dan Lewis and Rob Williams. Sorry, I'll get my teeth working out. In eleventh and twelfth with Edward Parfitt down in thirteenth. Paul Goddard, Chris Barnes, Ewan Stitchbury and Carl Jacklett round out the final there as well. We've just entered into qualifying at the moment. Just enough time to bring in Nathan Richards into the booth. Good evening, Nathan. How are you? sir i am doing very well thank you and i'm glad to be back here for the clios of course and i think this circuit is a brilliant one it's yet again another circuit i've driven on the um our racing game and i've got to say racing wise with it being quite a wide circuit it's very easy to make moves and also very easy to go side by side with drivers so i think in terms of the racing aspect we should see quite a lot here tonight james yeah we definitely should and it'll be interesting to see how these guys get on it's a very tight circuit is oran park and especially on the gp layout is even more exciting as well brings in some different aspects into the racing as they go around shell um corner here or you know obviously the conception that it was shell corner before they head into champion curve and yokohama bridge very interesting layout this one as we said no longer in existence it's now uh, unfortunately a housing estate not ideal but for these guys it's a different prospect altogether it is. I think the track itself, I think, is, is actually quite difficult. From turn seven onwards, you know, you're going to be able to throw a car into a corner and kind of just have hope that it'll turn. As you can see there, one of the drivers going a little bit wide. That'll be, I think, John Hutchison there going a little bit wide out of the final corner. That is an issue that this track presents. It's very easy to run wide out of a corner. And when you do that, you get presented with a wall, which is the last place you want to put your car. Yeah, you definitely don't. At the end of the day, you don't want to end up in a wall because that will be bad for you. Um, well, it's a wall, right? I and mean, the last thing you really want to be doing is hitting that in your car. Luke Maxwell goes on to pole position. Sam Van Olsen in second. Kian Palmer does an amazing up into third. Luke's got purple again in sectors one here. We've got four sectors on the race circuit at the moment. We're three minutes in. It's going to be very interesting to see what some of these guys are able to do. Great race in out last time in Summit Point. Very interesting even on a race in that was. Yeah. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry. Oh, 
seems to have lost Nathan for a brief moment there as well. But some great action going on. Maxwell took the win in race one and race three with the Costa winning in race two. So uh, there we go. That was the uh, situation from uh, last week, of course. Um, hopefully this week everything should be good and we shouldn't have any problems with any of these guys. John McCutcheonson has got purples as well. He's just about to go over the line. What is McCutcheonson going to be able to do? Is he going to improve? He is. He goes second. David Clasper jumps into second place not long after that with Sam Benoles, Kim Palmer, Kevin Anfield, who's joined us this evening. Kevin is a community manager for the Cleos, so he works alongside putting the schedules together for the Cleos for next season. So if you've driven it in the Cleo series and, and you don't like the schedule, well, DMs to Kevin, because he's the one who set it with the community vote there as well. Right, Nathan, are we good? Yes, we are. I had to leave and I'm back. There was a bit of an issue with the connection for a second, but yes, all's good. And and I'm back. And hopefully, I don't miss out, uh, miss out any more of the actions we saw there. Should Gibbons go up into P5, uh, P6 there with a 115.539. And so far, the times, especially in around that top five, looking very, very close there. Only half a second separates Luke Maxwell and... Kian Palmer, still many drivers not yet to set a lap. Tom Dillon, De Costa and Ludovic Jure, two drivers I expect to see a little bit higher than where they are at the moment. They should easily be challenging for that top five. But also it's great to see David Klasper up in P2 on the grid. Yeah, definitely. I think David's done rather well since he's come into this season, new driver this season as well. These guys are halfway through. So I think it's going to be very, very interesting dives into the pit lane. You see that very tight pit lane entrance. Maxwell goes into sec um, into first. He improves his time. McCutcheonson improves his time. So he still cements his place in second. He goes in and gets changed. Edward Parfit comes up into seventh with Wayne Palmer and Kevin Anfield down in ninth and tenth. Dan Lewis, not entirely sure if he's going to race. Chris Barnes, Rob Williams, probably going to start from the back. And Ludovic Jure has unfortunately got a penalty. So he does not be able to qualify. Um, and he will be joining us at the end of the uh, race. Uh, well, at the end of qualifying, of course, he'll come out on two tracks. So there we go. It's very interesting for all of these guys to determine what they've got to do here. What's going to be the best line? Um... I don't really know, to be fair. I think you're just going to try and see what works best. I think, you know, the drivers, because they're all going to be going side by side into corners, I don't think there's really a best line. I think it's just about being able to kind of catch drivers off guard and putting them under pressure into some of the corners. Um, of course, you know, it's quite a wide track, so making it side by side is quite easy to do. I've seen cars go three wide around some parts of this circuit. I think the only place you can't really go side by side is probably just around turn zone where you have that little bit of a, you know, downhill right into a left. I think that's the only place you can't really make a move along this circuit. This is, of course, where Mr. Kevin Anfield is heading down towards at the moment. This is probably the only place you can't really um, make your cars go side by side. As um, Dylan De Costa goes into second there with a 40.553 uh, and still around a second separating the top 10 here so far James the qualifying is probably some of the closest we've seen all season so far yeah absolutely I think this is they've all getting as I say that's why we abolished the am and pros and that's why obviously um, we've got this overall championship I think at the end of the day we need it um, I don't think that uh, it you know, it was needed. They are all as quick as they are each other. Obviously, with the reverse grids, the top 10 and, and full reverse for race number th uh, three, there's no reason for it. They can all win. And, and that's the standard that we've got at the moment. Yeah, of course. I think so far, you know, obviously having those three different types of races, it allows anyone to win. And we've had multiple winners this season. We've had multiple people jump onto the podium and some jump up into positions where maybe in a normal race with a normal qualifier and they wouldn't really put themselves into. So that's a good thing, uh, I suppose, to make the championship a little bit closer. And also, it rewards racecraft because those, like, you know, the likes of DaCosta, Maxwell, who are normally in a run around that top five, have to, work their way, uh, have to work their way through a pack, which can be very difficult, even if you are, you know, a lot quicker than all of them because you're still going to make it side by side and still get your car ahead. So it does, you know, create challenges and puts drivers into different situations than they normally would be in. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the thing. You get to learn to be up front. You get to learn to be in the mid-pack. You get to learn to fight your way through if that is something that you're able to do. And I think going out, it's going to be very interesting. The times are starting to drop off. That normally hits the uh, hits 
the, that's normally the case as we hit this sort of last minute of qualifying. Luke Maxwell has got an improvement, however, in sectors two. He's coming in through Foster's dip now, going out the other side. Around Momo corner he goes, and then up to O'Brien Aluminium Dogleg. Well, that's a new one on me. I've never heard of a, <laughs> of a corner called that, but that's where we are just about now. And then we come into Ricaro, which is the final corner here. And let's see if Maxwell can get any improvements on the time. Did he just tap the wall? If he did, that's going to completely nullify his lap. It looks like he may have done. So let's see what he gets up to here as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing Luke Maxwell. I think he's going to be incredibly quick here this evening. I just need to. I've been testing some things all day and I've completely forgot to do something. So excuse me two seconds why I just make a brief change here. Okay, I'm back. I do apologize for that one. I did um, unfortunately make some changes earlier on and that affected the sound. So uh, hopefully we will be back and you can hear the cars there as well. Dylan Costa on the race circuit coming down Foster's Dip and he will be leading off. Got about 15 seconds. Not entirely sure if he's going to make this. It's going to be very, very close for Dylan Da Costa, but we will find out as the time goes on. He's got about three seconds. He's definitely not going to make this one. And Dylan Da Costa there, unfortunately, did not make it. Right, let's bring you up the grid for race number one. Luke Maxwell is on pole position with Dylan Da Costa in second, John McCutcheon in third, Kevin Anfield in fourth, with David Clasper fifth, Sam Reynolds in sixth, Kian Palmer and Edward Palmer, or JBB boys rounding out road number four. Then we've got Wayne Palmer, Stuart Gibbons, Chris Barnes, Rob Williams, Dan Lewis, and Lord of Jure. The final car on the grid. Exciting, yes. Is it going to be clean, do we think? Um, probably not, um, James. I don't think so. It's, um, you know, it's always quite chaotic, isn't it, in these cars? And of course, with this time, hopefully, we get a standing start like we didn't back. Um, Back last week, it was it Summit Point or something. We didn't get the something start, did we, unfortunately? No, we didn't, but I believe we have this week. I know Mr. Williams has been making sure he checks the um, checks the session over and over and over and over and over again. We know that there are glitches with an iRacing where it does modify the session um, for you, just because, you know, why not, right? at the end of the day. Uh, Tom Kearns, good <laughs> evening, James and David. Good evening to you, sir. DGR, come on, crack it. Um, up the crack it without a paddle, says uh, Callum Wilson and DGR, which I believe is Chris Evans. Uh, there is that... Dad goes racing, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly. Um, so let's see what's going to happen here with these guys. I think it's going to be an interesting one. I am going to be interesting to see how these guys get on, to be honest, after this. And uh, seeing how the racing goes, I think they're going to do rather well between them. But there is Luke Maxwell out on that pole position ready to go at a race circuit that no longer exists it is a housing <laughs> estate unfortunately not good for the guys in australia but it's, it, to be honest it's no. the way the circuits are going here goes the lights now we're gonna have one we're gonna have two we're gonna have three we're gonna have four we're gonna have five and now we're up and running and now we are green 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 as we're gonna go down into the sweeper left hander here is luke maxwell with a whole shot dylan acosta on the ear behind him john mccutcherson all the way to the left kevin anfield in the middle sam and olsen kian palmer there tucked up in the top six it looks like david Clasper's just had a bit of a mare unfortunately he has gone off track right at the start taking it free wide through the sweeper that was going to end that way all day unfortunately for david clasper and down the order he goes but it is uh, dylan da costa jumped luke maxwell and now dylan has got the whole shot yeah into turn two maxwell made a big mistake and cost him probably around half a second of time and da costa went straight through and now leads away ahead of the two teammates uh, Maxwell and McCutcheon and then Kevin Anfield in the top four there making his I believe first appearance here mm -hmm. in this championship so starting off well as he continues his way along this opening lap and Vanos as well in the top five last week 
Um, he had a lot of battling, didn't he? And this time it looks like it might be a little bit more calmer for now. Only for now. We say that in the loosest possible term. Through the <laughs> O'Brien aluminium dog leg for the first time. Down into Recaro. This circuit, well, it suits these cars. Is it going to suit these drivers? I know we've lost Dan Lewis already. Dan was saying he was having PC issues. To be fair, there's been a lot of that this week. I've spoken to about four people that have had PC issues, unfortunately, as we jump on board with <laughs> Kevin Anfield here, the man from Australia. I I did find out qualifying is taking place at 5 a.m. It is about quarter past five in the morning, give or take, at the moment for Kevin Anfield. So uh, fair play for that commitment. Yeah, it's a, it's a very early one indeed. I, I definitely would not um, not be doing that myself. I'd be, still be asleep by then. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah. Indeed, so brilliant. Oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah, to be fair, I'd be asleep as well. Um, Saturdays and Sundays, I have to get up at 5 a.m. to help me some with his paper round. So apart from that, other than that <laughs> I uh, would be asleep. But uh, Luke's trying here. He's got McCutcheonson in front of him. He needs to kind of clear him if he can. Da Costa's opening up a 1.1 second gap at the moment. Down through Foster's dip they go. Now the left-hander Omomo. Now coming into O'Brien Aluminium Dogleg soon as well. It's going to be tricky, but it is heat. Lap number two is going to be done and at the moment Costa still out in front with Anfield, McCutcheonson, Vanolski and Palmer and Edward Palmer not Edward Palmer, Edward Parfit not too far away so these guys starting to do rather well gaps starting to appear though but it's kind of expected here yeah indeed I think you know you, you can only go side by side you can only apply pressure so many times on a lap and to be fair it's quite a surprise to see the likes of Maxwell being actually a little bit off the pace there. McCutcheon and De Costa a little bit quicker than him on that last lap, which is normally a surprise for Maxwell. He's normally the quickest here on the grid. As further back there, that's a move being made by, I think that'll be Ludovic Giro there on Chris Barnes for P9 and P10 there. We can see Giro to the outside looking to try and make a move on the back of Barnes. Has to back out for now. Looks to try and switch it to the inside, but perfect defence here from Chris Barnes. He's not letting Giro through anytime soon. No, it's definitely not. I can tell you that much. Obviously, Ludovic Giro having that penalty, which was a quali ban penalty, put him at the back of the grid. Has it go over Yokohama Bridge now? Come out the other side, down into Foster's dip. They're running too wide. Giro's on the inside. Barnes is on the outside. He's still fighting. Slight little bit of contact. Jure manages to hold on to it. Through Momo corner they go. Now on the run up into that dog leg section. Clasper on his way back through. He's climbing. He's trying to get past Jure as much as possible. Clasper's going to look for the inside in Recaro. He's not going to get it done this time around. What about Anfield? Anfield's got Sam Benoles tucked up right behind him. Then we've got Luke Maxwell. John McCutcheonson as well. Kian Palmer's trying to get onto the back. Benoles is going to look and go up the inside of the sweeper can he get it stopped going into coca-cola corner he can and i will say that he's going to be impressive because in the officials uh, luck this week currently until tomorrow this track was in the dark with no lights so um yeah we've given him daylight so we we're a bit a little bit more kinder than the <laughs> officials are Indeed, and probably saved a little bit more chaos than we would have had if it was um, a little bit more dark. As we can see, a replay here of Stuart Gibbons heading into the first corner, I believe. Oh. What's he do here? Lo oh, loses a cart, goes onto the gravel, but does collect it. And then, ah, uh, as a spin, he's touched the gravel and does pretty much what Luke Maxwell did on lap one there. He also had a bit of a half spin in towards turn number two here on board with McCutcheon and Maxwell there, just dipping a wheel into the um, gravel as they head their way through in towards the final corner and still it is Dylan DeCosta that leads away with a 1.1 second gap and I've got to say earlier I do not have a clue how um, Jure kept the car I don't know how he was sideways coming through that corner. Yeah, for front wheel drive does allow him to get a little bit of a power down early, but it does allow also mean you're going to be power sliding. He's got Chris Barnes. He's got Clasper behind him. Up front, McCutcheonson's got Maxwell behind that. Oh, no, Maxwell's got past McCutcheonson now. So Maxwell will be on the charge to get hold of Dylan DeCosta as the guys from Team Radline have a little bit of swap of positions there. Probably well done as they come through shells and then off the champion curve due to the fact that Maxwell seems to be a little bit quicker than McCutcheonson this evening. 
of course, and I think in the championship there's around 50 points separating the Custer and Maxwell, and I think Maxwell's main aim tonight is to try and at least um, eliminate any chance of the Costa trying to pull away more in that championship. Of course, there's a few drivers in the mix, but the only reason Maxwell is so far down is because he did miss a round eight back. I think it was round two he wasn't here for. I mean, you know, apart from that, he's been one of the top scorers in every other round since, and we'll see if he can try and deny the Costa a win here in the first heat of the Orant Park Raceway. They head out of the final corner in that gap now, just over a second as they head down to turn number one. And Maxwell now looking to get a bit more comfortable. He's got himself settled in and they're looking to push, push, push with about 14 minutes left to go in this race. Yeah, you can see DaCosta was nearly four temps slower than Maxwell last time around. He was a temp quicker on lap four. Maxwell um, had lap three, but then DaCosta over lap one and two. That's where the gaps come from. It's now coming down rapidly. Eight temps at the moment. Maxwell's on a charge and he's trying to charge right up to the back of Dylan De Costa. It's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Don't go anywhere at the moment because it's going to be Maxwell for sector one. Is he going to get through over the Yokohama Bridge and take more time out? Maxwell's on a bit of a charge here. Nafe. He's trying to close that gap back up. He did get held up a little bit behind his teammate, but now he's on the run after Dylan. Of course, and, you know, we, we've seen Maxwell before, haven't we? You know, when he's on the charge, he can apply the pressure, and Dylan will be quite scared and worried uh, with Maxwell coming in so close behind, and that gap there just over a second as they head down in towards the final part of the circuit, and further behind as well, Van Alst in P4, still looking strong ahead of Kevin Anfield, of course. Sam Van Alst is our championship leader, I believe, at the current time, or at least he's very close to it. Uh, at the moment, so he will also be looking to try and if he can catch up to the back of John McCutcheon, who is in third position. Fastest lap said the cost yet again slower this time by a better tenth and a half. Yeah, slower again. Maxwell's coming. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with these guys. We've got Kevin Anfield. It's slowly getting onto the back of Sam Vanoles. We've got Kia Palmer trying to close him down there. Edward is just sat here trying to make his way forward as well as trying to keep Wayne Palmer back. Obviously, Wayne is the dad. Kian is the son. And David Clasper, Ludovic Jure not leaving each other alone once more. They've cleared Chris Barnes now and they're coming in to nearly the final 10 minutes but that gap up front currently nine temps it looks like costa's got a little bit more speed through that middle section of the track so when we start going through from coca-cola turn one till we come out yokohama bridge and then maxwell just seems quicker for the rest of the lap so it's down to maxwell to kind of improve them times to start moving forward of course, because, you know, you can see throughout the sectors, there's some sectors where Dylan's a lot quicker, there's some sectors where Maxwell is a lot quicker. And so far, that's not working out for Maxwell because he's still got a round, a one-second gap. He needs to, you know, be comfortable in every single sector here ahead of DaCosta if he wants to catch up and, and try and fight for first place. It's actually, DaCosta was quicker on that lap there mm. with a 14.3, uh, sorry, a 14.464 there ahead of Maxwell who did a, a 14.480 there so not too far away from each other is that some mistake there from Wayne is that Wayne Palmer there going off or Kim Palmer possibly I saw someone going to the gravel at turn two and it was Kian Palmer, unfortunately. Oh, it goes in far too hot. Nearly tags Kevin Enfield. Edward goes through. How long that will last, I'm not entirely sure because it looks like Kian has got the pace of Edward this morning, this evening, I should say. More in sector two for Maxwell. Not a massive gap. Two thousandths of a second he pulled out. He's got there. Costa's quicker in sectors three, which is what we did say. Jure is just ventured off the side of the circuit has managed to come back on and Maxwell what's going to happen over sectors four it is the Costa again they're kind of offsetting each other here aren't they with the way that the sector times are working and Mac Mac Maxwell's not really making inroads on the Costa at the moment He's not, and to be fair, McCutcheon is also making in rows on the back of Maxwell as well. He's very quick so far um, at the moment. Obviously, we still got around 10 minutes left to go in this race, and we've got Kevin Anfield as well looking to make a move on Sam Van Ols for P4 in this race as they head their way oh. into turn number two. 
tries to go around the outside. Can't do so. That's going to be Edward Parfit locking up, it seems, there at turn two, was it? Yeah, just completely missed his breaking point after coming through the sweeper. And that's put him into the clutches of Ludovic Jure and David Clasper. There they are. Clasper's going side by side now. Round shell corner. You can see the high-rised curbs on the inside here at Orem. It is one of the features. They don't have the low flats. They've got an almost step curb on the inside. Now, after being safe there, Edward has now got to try and escape Ludovic. Kevin Anfield's just made that move over Sam Van Ols. They're continuing their fight through Momo Corner again. Now what's going to happen is they're coming into the last nine minutes here, Nave. It's been battles all the way through. Battles up front still commencing. Battles in this fourth and fifth. And battles all the way down in ninth and tenth. Of course, yeah. And it's brilliant to see, isn't it, James, when we have battles all over the grid. As we can see, Sam Van Olst here on the rear of Kevin Anfield. Once more, that gap increasing there to over six tenths of a second. Further back, we can see David Clasper here on the rear of Ludovic Jure for P9 and P10. Pretty much fighting for pole for the second race, which, of course, is a top ten reverse grid. As we'll see what moves they can make there as Clasper is within a tenth there of the back of Ludovic Jure, but I think that gap then was increased once more as they head their way into turn two and still, of course, here on board with Sam Van Olst in P number five, looking to try and take fourth away from Kevin Anfield and then the top three are pretty much clear. They're, they've got a, a five-second gap to fourth and they're all within a second of each other. So these three, I think, you know, McCutcheon uh, here, J James, is in the position just to kind of wait and see what the top two can do. And then maybe try and sneak yourself up the inside of one of them. Yeah, if he can. Maxwell's got to drag him, from, unfortunately, forward, though. Because they are losing time to Dylan Acosta. They're not really closing it up. It was 1.1. It's now down to about seven tenths. Acosta doesn't look like he's quite got it hooked up. But I think sectors two, three, and four save him. And that's where he makes up at that time. Kevin Anfield with Sam Van Ols. Sam Van Ols not getting close, unfortunately. Clasper and Jure closing down on Edward Parvey. He's got seven minutes there, dear boy, to make sure that he stays in front. But Clasper and Jure, no slouches here. They've been involved, you know, they have their own little ta ta tas Jure's been involved in a bit this season. That, you know, unfortunately for him, that quali ban come and the stewards were like, right, no more. Can't do it with you anymore. Oh, and that's going to be um, a little bit of Jure going deep at turn two and now dropping down to P11. That allows Chris Barnes through into the top 10. Bit of a shame there for Jure to make such a critical mistake mistake here in this race and we'll have to see what he can do here. And remember, because of the top 10 starting, obviously with it being 10th first and first in 10th, Ludovic Jure is one position away from starting 10 positions high. So he really wants to get back into that top 10 to kind of stop him from having any, having any issue of where he starts in the second round as they head their way through in towards Foster's dip. And so far, you can see Jure pretty much pushing Chris Barnes through these next corners. The virtual drivers by TX3 car against the Kraken Racing cars. They head their way over the hill. Now up to another right-hander. And this corner here, James, is very easy to, you know, it's very easy to kind of miss, miss your mark, is it, in terms of the turning? Yeah, you literally aim at, uh, at, um, on the right-hand side. You literally will aim at a target on a straight line and you will just go for it. Uh, and hope that you've made the track on the other side. It is literally <laughs> blind. It's, it's not something that you can really line up. It's not something that you can sit back and think, OK, I've got to put my car here. You do pick a target in front of you. And Lejure, dude, let him go. Thank you very much. Ludovic Jure does let Chris Barnes crack on. But it's interesting to know that that one position that they're fighting over is worth 10 on the grid. You're either going to start in pole or you're going to start in 11th. And that is what that 10th place means. It's literally that much of a split, isn't it? It means so, lot, yeah. so much to people. Of course, as we can see here, though, Luke Maxwell has gained into the rear of Dylan De Costa. Now, that gap being just over five, um, just own, own under five tenths of a second as they head their way down towards turn one and Maxwell in second and McCutcheon uh, there in third position looking to also try and gain in here on the rear of his teammate and we'll see 
what type of battling they can get underway. And you can see them, they just tried to break that slipstream down to so when we know that it can be quite strong in these cars. And hence why Maxwell is really gained in, looking for a move, has to back out at the last second. That was close to contact here, but Maxwell surely will be looking to get this move done soon. Yeah, he's looking very feisty at the moment as Luke Maxwell over Dylan De Costa. Round they go, round the right hand at here. I'm not entirely sure what that says, low B in 17. I've tried to use Google Translate and it gave me something along the lines of he turns on Dylan everywhere, which I don't think that's quite what oh. you're trying to say. So, you know, Translate, come up with you're speaking French at me, but maybe you're not as they go through Foster's dip and then coming out the other side run the left hand or a moment now this is what we were talking about when we were saying you just aim right you take the car to the left hand side and you can see a tree on you there and you literally aim it just to the right of the tree and there you go you go through on that way so that's how that corner's done it's not you know, you aim it at a focal point. It's kind of like Road Atlanta, yeah. uh, where you start going up the hill out of turn one before you go into two and three. You aim at the tree at the top in front of you to know where your turning is for the chicane. And that is the same thing on the race circuit. You do aim at a tree. Ludovic Jure, well, he's aiming at the tree and literally trying to push Chris Barnes along here. These two having a great fight. Very respectful. There was that one moment Jure did allow Barnes to retake the position after the initial contact. At. On board with Jure now. He's trying to get him go up the inside, is he? Well, he's not really making a massive dive on the draft. There he goes. He starts pulling out now. Ludovic Jure through the sweeper. Barnes gives him room. Is Barnes going to get it stopped? Is Jure going to get it stopped? That one place that's worth so much. Barnes is going to try to tight cut back on the inside. Is he going to now? He makes him round the outside here. Is he going to be able to get through? Chris Barnes at shell corner. He's not the this time around, these two having a right little ding dong. And Edward has also got now David Clasper right up behind him as well. So we've got one, two, and three battling out. We've got five and six nearly not too far apart at the moment. There is Kian Palmer. There is Wayne Palmer. Then we've got Edward fighting out with David Clasper. And then we've got Ludovic Jure having a scrap with Chris Barnes. So on it goes all the way through the field. But it's what we've seen all season, isn't it, James? You know, round one, two and three, we've seen the exact same thing. Everyone in their own little groups having a nice little battle and enjoying some brilliant battling for their positions. And we can see now Maxwell once more looking to gain in on the rear of Dylan De Costa and actually gets past. De Costa's made a mistake of thinking to turn two now. Maxwell has the lead. De Costa in second. McCutcheon looking to make a move for second position as well no. as they head down to the corner. There's a bit of a spin. Maxwell gets collected. De Costa takes the lead back again and McCutcheon into second place. Yeah, that was... Mm. A bit naughty. Uh, yes, it's um, it was a little bit. I think we're gonna have to see what the stewards come out of that one. Was he alongside? No, definitely Ooh. not. It was never making the apex and was never alongside, unfortunately. So, uh, Dylan De Costa, you could be in a little bit of naughty trouble come the end of this one, well, my dear sir, once the stewards get hold of it. But uh, let's see now. Can John McCutcheon bring that William Wallace fight in Scottish spirit? He does. Goes up the inside of Dylan De Costa around Ricaro, squeezes him against the wall. And now it's all about what McCutcheon is going to do. Is he going to hold him up enough for Maxwell to come back? At him that's gonna be nearly the final lap and I say that in a loose term because they were literally on the cusp of that 116 of whether or not this is gonna be the final lap I don't see Ooh. Barney anywhere unless he's taken the night off now was the gap got up to 2.4 seconds there's a bit of mistake again if they came to contact once more is the question. The cost is in the lead by over two seconds Maxwell's in third we'll see a replay here as they head into turn one Dylan De Costa oh, up the inside. Oh, and the push just goes really, really wide and into the gravel he goes. And the gravel there, it's horrible, isn't it? Because you mm. get slowed down so much. But luckily, it doesn't feel like you're driving on ice, I suppose, is one thing. Yeah, well, since they added that depth to it, it makes it even harder there. This is going to be really, really close on whether or not what this is going to team up here and say whether this is the final lap or there's going to be one more. He's got about 10 seconds. We're going to have to play this one by ear, I'm afraid, guys, because I didn't see Barney. It is the checkered flag. They have decided it's the last 
last lap of the race. Still at the cost is going to come over the line in acrimonious circumstances, I'm sure. And I'm pretty sure he will take the victory, but I'm also sure he's going to take a penalty there, Nathan. And that is without a doubt. Yeah, I think I think a penalty is definitely on the cards there, indeed, for the Costa. Though a little bit late, I don't think it was even close to being intentional, but it was just a bit of a late misjudgment, and we've seen it before around this circuit by multiple drivers in the past in this race. It can happen. Ludovic Chure did the same thing to Chris Barnes um, a corner earlier, as we can see here. This is Ludovic Chure heading through. Oh, and locks up heavily, doesn't he, into there. Mm. And that does allow Chris Barnes to slide back through and will take 10th position. So, Jure will be starting from 11th position as we can see the grid for the next race. Yeah, here are the results for heat number one. Dylan DaCosta is your winner. And I'm pretty sure the stewards will be looking at some of them incidents. John McCutcheon in second, Luke Maxwell in third, Kevin Anfield in fourth, Sam Van Alst in fifth. Then we've got Kian Palmer, Wayne Palmer, Edward Parfit rounds out the top eight, David Clasper in ninth. Chris Barnes does get the pole due to Ludovic Jure going a little bit too deep there. Rob Williams in 12th, Stuart Gibbons 13th, and obviously Dan Lewis who's not making it this time around. We can bring you up the grid for heat number two. They do have a five-minute grid warning, but it will be Chris Barnes in first, David Clasper in second, and Edward Partey in third, with Wayne Palmer in fourth. Kian Palmer, Sam Van Olst in fifth and sixth, Kevin Hanfield in seventh, Luke Maxwell eighth, John McCutcheon ninth, and Dylan DaCosta in tenth. Then you've got Ludovic Jure, Rob Williams, Stuart Gibbons, and of course Dan Lewis, who's probably not going to make the grid. Very interesting race, and I think this reverse grid is going to make it even more interesting. It will, because I think from what we saw in qualifying, I think David Clasper looks very quick. He got caught up in, in an incident, didn't he, at the start? Mm. So Clasper here could be in a very good position to try and, you know, fight for a victory here tonight. I think he's got, you know, more than the pace to do. So Chris Barnes did look a little bit more off the pace, unfortunately. So he's going to have to do a good job of defending and trying to battle with all the cars, trying to fight their way through but the likes of Maxwell and DaCosta obviously a bit of a a little personal battle between those two after their little incident so we'll see what those two get up to on the um on the, on, on the opening few laps of this next 20 minute race but I think yet again we're going to have a very exciting race where those further back yet again you know if you if you're 11th and lower you'll be fighting more I think for qualifying position for heat three than you will do for position in heat two mm, that is the uh that's the thing. It's a full reverse grid for race three. Full reverse. So basically, if you win, you go into the back. Now, that's not always easy for somebody to accept, right? And they do start getting a little bit overzealous with some of their <laughs> moves. They try and make, you know, late dives, late lunges, because they know they've got to get to the front. I think... They just forget that they've got 20 minutes, though. That's the problem. That 20 minutes does allow them to take a little bit of time to make their way through. Yeah, indeed. I think that's. I think it's a nice thing, is that they haven't got a really rush to fight through. You know, there's only a few cars for some of them to get past. You know, if you're the likes of, uh, I think it was uh, McCushius, and you're in P7, so you've only got to get through on six cars, which in 20 minutes is quite possible mm. um, for yourself to do. And of course, as well, a key thing to notice is that he was Jure starting P11. It means he's got his teammate just ahead. So we could see a little bit of a team battle between um, obviously McCutcheon and Maxwell and DaCosta and Jure. Ooh, so a virtual drivers by TX3 and a team red line into team race and into team battle. So let's see what happens there. It's going to be very exciting. I can feel it now. It's going to be battles all over the front. Are we going to get a surprise with Chris Barnes taking the victory, do we think? Will Clasper take it? He's been showing pace all the way through quality. He's now got the second place on the grid. Is he going to be making his way through the field? Well, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Who do you think is going to win now for race two? Oh, it's, it's a hold on, isn't it? I think, you know, we've got many people in the midfield. Which are we've got those who are at the front start near the back. I'm going to go with David Clasper for this one because he showed some good pace and he's now starting in second. And I think he's been a little bit unlucky, hasn't he, in these past couple of rounds. So I'm hoping tonight he can get himself a bit more luck and get a victory. See, that's the thing, I think. You're, you're on, you've hit the money on the head. I, I can't see past Clasper as long as he has a nice, clean start and is able to get away. 
if he doesn't have that, well, then we've got a different story, I think, for David Clasper. I think he needs <laughs> to just make sure that he can get away and make his way forward because that's really what we need to see from him, isn't it? With him sitting yeah. in that place that he is at the moment. Uh, Wayne Palmer there behind Edward Palmer. Edward is blinking, guys. Don't panic. Our internet will be sorted out very, very shortly. Kevin Anfield <laughs> still there. Luke Max, it's a problem. I'm, I'm broadcasting. He's trying to drive. What more can we expect uh, um, with internet that I've got to go and feed the guinea pig to make sure he runs fast enough for me to actually get it? Um, <laughs> so, Rob Williams at the back here. Just waiting for Sam Van Oles, who is traditionally late. There is Sam. Is Stuart Gibbons rejoining? Or is he just thinking, I've enough is enough? Well, he hasn't got long, and I think it might be, and call it a day for Stu Gibbons there. And unfortunately for him, he looks like he's going to miss the start. Is, and then the lights are going to be coming on. They will. And David Clasper is in second place, but it's all about Chris Barnes on that pole. And right now, he is running away. He's taken a whole shot on the way down to turn one. Edward Parker covers off Wayne Palmer there. He comes back, takes his racing line. Clasper's on the way down. Jure's all the way out there. I'm not entirely sure what's happened to Ludovic Jure. Chris Barnes takes the whole shot going into turn one. He does lead that way. And now we've got Chris Barnes, Clasper, Parfit, Van Ols is in there. Palmer, Palmer and Maxwell and Anfield. John McCutcheon not really gaining any positions off the line. Neither did Dylan DeCosta. They're still where they are and they've got a tough group of racers in front of them now as it is. Chris Barnes taking the whole shot coming under Yokohama Bridge. Of course, and yet again, a big shame for Ludovic Giro to get involved in some sort of issue at the start of this race. And he's now over 10 seconds back from the leaders. Chris Barnes still leads for now, but Clasper very close behind an Edward Parfit in third as you can see Clasper pushing Chris Barnes through a few of these corners now to the inside goes Clasper back there to the last second now and we'll look to go side by side as they head their way through it towards this next section of circuit and does Clasper keep it to the outside no he has to back out for now so surely James he makes this move down towards turn number two yeah Savados is trying to make that move towards the last corner Edwards run a little bit deep that unfortunately is also going to allow Palmer to come up alongside him it's now a straight drag between Chris Barnes and David Clasper it's a straight drag between Wayne Palmer and Edward Parfit. And now they're all coming down into that turn number two. Oh, Whoa. Clasper. He got a big old snap. He literally snapped that car from one side to the other. Boom, boom. There it goes. And unfortunately for David Clasper, gravel trap all day. And that was just purely on his own. But Samados did clear um, Edward there. And now Edward's got Wayne for company. These guys battling it out for two. Of, uh, for, well, for uh, position number three at the moment. Of course, this is very good here for Sam Van Ols, who yet again was a driver who looked very quick in that opening race and now looking to make his way through for the lead ahead of Chris Barnes. And we can see there that was De Costa overtaking Kean Palmer for P7. And Kevin Anfield now on the rear of Kean Palmer as well, as that's going to be Edward Parfit off onto the gravel, into the grass. And luckily, it doesn't get much damage there. Well, he doesn't get much damage at all. As he, you can see, they're just dipping it into the gravel, and the car just moves away from him, doesn't it? Nothing mm. he can do to save that. No, uh, that is just stay out of the gravel, son. Oh, not that one. That's that's all we can safely say on that. Chris Barnes has got the inside with Sam Manol's there as well. Maxwell's got the fastest lap at the moment. 1.15.5. Van Ols is trying to go around the outside. I think he's got the job done. He's got that inside line. There is Barnes now in second. Wayne Palmer in third. And he's got ever-looming Luke Maxwell. John McCutcheon is playing and holding up Dylan DaCosta as much as he possibly can. Kian Palmer's in there with Kevin Hanfield behind with Rob Williams in the battle as well. Go Rob here after a rough race at number one with David Clasper, Edward Parfit, Ludovic Jure slowly gaining onto the back of the pack here. I'm not entirely sure what happened at the start, but Chris Barnes lost about 1.1 seconds over Sam and Ols for Ols at the moment. He's looking good for them points. He's sitting second in the championship. He saw the Costa guy and ra win race one. Definitely penalties in coming on that one. And now it's going to be even more interesting as see how close they will be after this round of course what Maxwell here should be looking to make the move ahead of Wayne Palmer very shortly to get himself 
into a podium position. Obviously finished P2 in the last race. They're looking to try and finish P2 or maybe even try to take the victory here in this race as they head their way down towards turn number one and turn number two and no move being made by any of them as they head into that breaking zone. De Costa though on the rear of John McCutcheson there. Those two within a tenth or two of each other as they head down to turn two and De Costa a bit of a, a lock up there and um, luckily they're not coming to contact this time with one of the uh, with one of the um, team Radline cars and just make it through safe and sound. Yeah, it does, but it is with McCutchinson. It is with Maxwell. Maxwell's closing onto the back end of Palmer as best as he possibly can. Starting to spread out in front a little bit. DaCosta and Phil Palmer, Williams, Clasper, not too far away from each other. Ed was trying to recover from his own mistake, of course. Hit the gravel. The car just snapped the other way. On board we go with Luke Maxwell. That is Chris Barnes. That is Wayne Palmer in front of us. Maxwell now doing a great job. We're going to aim at the tree in the very distance and we're going to point it and we're going to hope we made it through and Maxwell does make it through as well. That's one of the interesting things about iRacing in, in general. Sometimes there isn't markers that you could pick out. So you do pick out the scenery as a marker for turning or as a marker for braking yeah. and I do it a lot uh, and I think it's interesting to, to see that you can utilize the track to know where you've got to stop. It's like going around Nords, you know, you pick up little bits of graffiti that are on the racetrack for you to be able to break. Yeah, indeed. And I think that's, you know, I think that's kind of what separates the good from the best. If you can, you know, spot a thing here and spot a thing there that makes you break a little bit later or makes you turn in a little bit better, you know, you can have a bit of an advantage of that other as well because you won't tell them what you look at for breaking. You'll, you know, you'll keep it to yourself. As we can see now, Maxwell on the attack of Palmer can't find a way through there. Brilliant defence here from Wayne Palmer, but Maxwell switches it to the inside as they head over the bridge and will be looking to get the move done for P3, but he can't. Palmer's doing very good defence here, but actually goes a little bit deep. Maxwell goes to the inside, and we've got McCutcheson as well looking to get involved as they head down towards this next left hand at De Costa as well, looking to make a position into P5. Goes De Costa now, looking to try and take P4 away from Maxwell, but McCutcheson's going back at him as they head over the hill down towards the final corner, James. This part is absolutely electric here between these guys. They're going at it for literally half of the race circuit. Dylan De Costa, John McCutcheson. McCutcheson got a slow entry into Ricaro. He's got slow coming out the other side. And De Costa did get that position from him. Now Kevin Anfield's going to try and have a go. Wayne Palmer is just positioning this car in a way that says you cannot get through. And John and Luke Maxwell can't. He's got nowhere to go. He's going to have to rely on Palmer making that mistake at the moment. There's a five-car train. Palmer's to cork in the bottle. These guys are trying to go through. And Palmer's just going, nope, nope. Nope, he's just positioning that car. That's allowing Chris Barnes to get on his bike a little bit. David Clasper and Edward Parfitt has just unfortunately had their own little ding-dong. As we'll have a look back at that one. I've got a funny feeling. Clasper made the mistake here through the sweeper. He goes, he goes, oh, gets all loose. Edward comes around the corner. Tries to go up around the outside. Then they have a little bit of a ding-dong going into Shell. Oh. Ooh. A little bit of a cross on there, wasn't it? It looks like a little bit of desync as well because it didn't seem like they actually made contact at first. No. With a net code, I think, would have been an issue. I believe you are probably right. Wayne Palmer hangs on for a, another lap. He tries, he's, he's hanging on. I'm not quite sure how, but he's hanging on here as old <laughs> Wayne Palmer. Yeah, he's got very, four very quick cars behind him looking to make moves and not one of them can get past as he yet again defends to the inside. Does Wayne Palmer Maxwell nearly hitting him as they head through and towards turn two and now back down towards turn three. And Kevin Anfield now involved in this battle for P3 in this race and he's then in P7, James. That shows how big this battle is. The car for seventh is fighting for third. Yeah, he is. He's the cars are scrapping away. There's five of them there having a right little ding-dong. Maxwell's going to have to be aggressive because I can tell you what, De Costa will be. Over the figure of eight they come. Over the Yokohama Bridge. Now through Foster's Dip. Palmer's hanging on. He literally hanging on like a mountain climber on the sound of the mountain, clutching it by two fingers. The bits he is at the moment for Wayne Palmer. But he's doing an absolutely stellar job. All the while, Chris Barnes. 
Barnes is being wheeled in like a prize carp in a fishing lake at the moment. He's just being caught hand over foot. We're going to have six cars here. Six cars battling between second on all the way down into seventh. That is just mighty here as Maxwell looks at making a move finally over Wayne Palmer. Is he going to get that inside line through the sweeper? Palmer looks like he's a little bit quicker coming off that last corner. Through the outside of the sweeper he goes. He does go through to Costa pushes Maxwell through, tries to open up the door for himself. That's going to send them free wide. Oh, dearie me, further back. Dylan DaCosta, John McCutcheson. McCutcheson's going to go around the outside. Palmer's going to try and go again. Palmer's now defending <laughs> once more in fourth. DaCosta's fifth, McCutcheson's sixth, outfield in seventh. But Maxwell has now got Chris Barnes at his sight. Of course, I think now, you know, Chris Barnes, I don't think he'll defend as, as hard as Wayne Palmer did there. It should be a bit more of an easy move here for Luke Maxwell, who's going to be looking to try and take Peter away. That's the Costa and spinning with. I think that was McCutcheon there heading through and towards Foster's dip. I saw then one of the cars going round a bit of contact there. I think we caught it a little bit too late. And let's see what happened here. Oh, I think that might be on John there. Oh, it looks like he turned over a little bit, didn't it? Oh, and then obviously gets rear-ended by the rear end of the clear of Dylan the Costa there. Oh, these two teams are not uh, had a good day. Already, you, uh, uh, no, but I've got a funny feeling Dylan the Costa was already sliding there. Yeah. Ooh. If you have a look at his steering, he was already sliding. Watch. It gets loose. There you go. And then the contact. Yeah. So if he'd held it straight, it might have been a different story. But he was already sliding at that moment as well. I've got to, got to put that in there because it was happening at that time. So let's see again what the stewards say about that. But I think the Costa was already on the slide on that one before the contact with McCutcheon. And then, of course, we saw the second piece of contact there as well. Of course, and, yeah, you, you know, the Costa, he doesn't want to, want to make contact with one of them. He wants to make contact with both there as... Um, they all continue their way through and DaCosta down in P7, McCutcheon down in P12 and he will um, at this point be starting from pole position. So maybe it's not the worst in the world here for John McCutcheon. He can try and make it work in the final race. There's obviously Edward Parfitt in P11 and then we've got David Casper here on the rear of Keir Palmer for P9. And at the front, Wayne Palmer still looking to attack after Barnes. What happened to Maxwell? Did he get caught up somewhere? Because he's now down to P5 and he was in P3, so Palmer back in P2, possibly yet again. I'm not sure. It's going slow, wasn't he, down towards turn one, it looked like. Yeah, I wonder if he's got a slowdown coming off the final corner. Uh, I mean. And that could be why he's had to, unfortunately, let them two guys go. But I'm sure for Maxwell, it puts him back in the fight. It gives him that spirit and it gives him that fight once more to go again. So Luke Maxwell's got Anfield, Palmer and Barnes. Barnes now being a little bit of a cork in the bottle, but doing an absolutely stellar job holding on to these positions. Yeah, indeed. He's doing a brilliant job so far in second place. And Palmer as well. Wayne Palmer in third also doing a brilliant job of defending when he needs to. As that might have been another move being made there. I think that could have been um, Palmer and Clasper there coming to, together as they oh. head through into the corner. And that's going to be Wayne Palmer who gets collected. And oh. did he collect the car? He does. <laughs> Brilliant there from Wayne Palmer. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he's going to have a slowdown for his troubles. Um, <laughs> but he survived. He, he did survive. And he did it rather well. He got spun over the corner. Manages to carry on <laughs> and says, thank you very much, Kevin Anfield. Oh. But I've still managed to hold on. Unfortunately for Wayne Palmer, there will be a slowdown. That is why he is now dropped about 1.1 seconds. That's going to release Anfield. Do you know the funniest thing is, is every time they get near Chris Barnes, somebody makes a mistake. Yeah. Every single time they get within about a second of Barnes and then there's contact. Then they get within a second of Barnes and then there's contact again. And at the moment, Barnes is saving because the others can't get it right. So go Chris Barnes for second place. You're doing an absolutely stellar job. Edward Barbett bit off the circuit here as well. What did he get up to? Did he just run wide? He did. Over the grass, over the gravel. Manages to keep it going. Fair play. Unlike the last time. Further down, we've got Edward, David Clark. 
Clasper, Kian Palmer, and just going over the bridge in front of Kian, you can't see him, there he is, just to the right, there he is on your screen, is Ludovic Jure. So, yeah, interesting little ta-ta-tas going on, and Maxwell is, well, very close to Kevin Anfield. He is indeed here, looking to make a move for P3 as they head into the final corner now, back down towards turn one they go, and, well, all this battling has helped Chris Barnes and it's also helped heavily Sam Van Olst who leads by six and a half seconds nearly here in this race as Luke Maxwell looking to make a move here on the back of Kevin Anfield into turn one has the inside line will look to keep it to the inside breaks later then to turn one hops the curb and then breaks even later into turn number two can he get the move complete I think he can round uh, the inside he goes and into P3 goes Luke Maxwell yeah you can, you can just hear Chris Barnes in the car Drats. <laughs> just, you can just hear him now going, oh dear, they've made it. Oh dear, I'm not, <laughs> they're coming again at me. But can the man from Kraken Racing hold on for five minutes for that second place? He's going to have five more laps to try and hold on. Dylan DaCosta, Rob Williams, Dylan in a car that looks like it's been a little bit battered here. You can see it on the, the rear end as he goes past the camera. Look at that, he's a little bit crinkled. He looks like my wife after driving in the car park, I can tell you that much. Yeah, unfortunately, Dylan DaCosta to do, trying to clear Williams. Williams trying to hold him up as long as possible. Of course, and these two looking to battle still. Rob Williams now under a lot of pressure here from the Costa, who looks to tick up the inside into the final corner. Looks for it. Can he tick it up the inside? He can. Loses the rear a little bit. They go side by side on the exit down to turn one. Who gets the best run? And the Costa, you can see there, a bit of a battered rear of the car. You can see a few dents in the um, on the rear of his car as they head down to turn one here. So a bit of damage for Dylan De Costa. As they head into turn one and turn two, can the Costa find a move? He has to go to the outside and then has to try and switch it back, but he can't, can he? Oh, Dylan. Steady. Yeah, the Costa obviously with that damage after that contact with uh, McCutcheonson that spun him backwards into the side of McCutcheonson. And Edward Parfit's in the pit lane. David Clasper's in the pit lane. I'm wondering if that's because of damage or because they've both got drive throughs I think. It could be more drive throughs here for these two. As they come out the other side, they don't stop. Well, Edward's got a, clearly got a drive through. David Clasper's clearly got a drive through. And now Luke Maxwell has got Chris Barnes. And unfortunately for Barnsey, he's been dragged into it here. Of course, and we'll see now what Chris Barnes can do to defend here from Luke Maxwell and Kevin Anfield as they round the final corner down to turn one. Four minutes-ish left to go, about three and a half to be precise as they head into turn one once again now in this race and we'll see can Maxwell get the move complete can he find his way into P2 after finished I believe it was second in race one looking to do the same here in race two Barnes defence to the inside Maxwell can't find his way past and there all that battling allows Anfield to get a good exit and try and pull alongside Maxwell can't do so has to back out for now unless he sends it here on the rear of um, Maxwell round the outside he goes and he can't no, he can't there. He's trying. He's trying. Barnes is holding a station. Chris Barnes through champion curve is being a champion at the moment. Over Yokohama Bridge they go. Barnes he spits up a little bit of dirt. Now Maxwell's coming again. We've got about three minutes, Chris. You've got about three laps, dear sir. That is it. Can you hold on for them three laps? Well, I don't really know if that's gonna is it gonna be possible do we think well we'll see in around three minutes time it's gonna be hard but i definitely think it will be possible here from chris barnes but then again maxwell's got a good run hasn't he down towards turn one this time around here using that slipstream here on the rear of the cup and then anfield behind and palmer as well getting involved once again possibly with this battle for p2 in this race and maxwell to try, trying to prepare the car to the outside to then bring it back to the inside but chris barnes knows that's what he's got to do so defense the inside line as they headed to turn oh. two goes deep now maxwell is ahead on the exit and now kevin anfield's turn to try and make a move ahead of K uh, chris barnes oh barnsey break barnsey break oh 
Chris Barnes did manage to hit his breaking point there through a shell corner. He jinked out behind Maxwell and that normally takes away your vision, normally takes away your breaking point, and that normally causes disaster. But Chris Barnes did manage to do that. He did manage to get it stopped. Wayne Palmer's coming again. All the while, Anfield's gone side by side through Foster's dip at the moment with Chris Barnes. He, Barnes is going to have the inside for Momo. He manages to make it light there. Now he's got up through the dog leg. I'm not going to call it his full name. It's massive. Now, is he going to be able to hold on? Outfield again. Trying to... Oh, party! <laughs> God, blimey! Well, he's getting his elbows out, that's for sure, isn't it? Well, oh, I think Papa got a slowdown, didn't he? Yeah, looks like it, but that also looks like um, Kevin Anfield, the man from Australia. I hope you know a good plastic surgeon, son, because your name is at <laughs> Aura Park, I can tell you that much. After Chris Barnes just literally chopped your nose off there. And, well, there we go. Williams and Jure running side by side down through the sweeper. Oh, get it stopped a little bit. Get it stopped, son. There's does get it stopped there and does manage to make it past Robert Williams. But I can tell you what, how Anfield did not lose his nose there. That was just insane. Yeah. Oof. It was a scary one, wasn't it? It was a scary one indeed. As This is Chris Barnes still defending ahead of Kevin Anfield for P3. As they head down in towards his next right hander. Can um, Anfield find a way past? Has to go to the inside, but... You know, because of these corners here in the final section, you can't really find a way through. No. No, I agree. The way the corner makeup works like that, you can't. Sam Badolz is going to come over the line. He's going to take the victory. That white flag does my nutting at this circuit. It's so close to the time limit. Luke Maxwell comes over to finish in second. The line is quite far down. Did Chris Barnes do it? Has Kevin Anfield got him? Anfield, he's got him at the line. Oh, Barnesy. So close. <laughs> oh. Oh, cool. Ooh, it was close. Yeah, it definitely was close between Maxwell and Field and Barnes. And Barnes did um, not get that fourth place, unfortunately. David Clasper is going to be the last one over the line in 12th. Edward Parker comes over the line in 11th. And then Clasper is going to come over the line there as well. It was so close. Uh, getting that Chris Barnes he almost almost wrapped up a wrapped up a podium such a shame as Clasper comes over the line there and we'll bring you up the results very very shortly of this consolidation race or heat number two uh, go out dominate by nine seconds his course going to be at the back Luke Maxwell in second Kevin Anfield will be in third then we've got Chris Barnes Wayne Palmer Dylan De Costa Ludovic Jure Rob Williams in eighth Kian Palmer nine then we've got John McCutcheon, Edward Parfit, David Clasper. So at the moment, it's going to be Clasper and Parfit on the front row with McCutcheon in third. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. And then, of course, we're going to be in our five-minute warm-up. But, Nave, you've got to admit, that race, too, was electric. It was brilliant. Yet again, the racing has been absolutely amazing. And going through into the final round... I expect it to get even more crazy because yet again, we've got a very mixed up grid and drivers near the front starting yet again near the back. I think this final round, is it gonna, it's going to be hard, isn't it, to top off heat two? Oh, yeah. But it's really interesting, you know, because that's allowed John McCutcheon the possibility of taking a win. It will be in third on the grid, right? So he's got, Edward in front, and he's got David Clasper in front. Now, last time Clasper was on pole, we bigged him up and said, it's his chance for a win. <laughs> and it didn't work out so well, did it? So I'm not going to no. say that. I'm just going to say, do we think McCutcheon can get it? Maybe. <laughs> we'll be cautious this time. Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> cautious. We definitely were. <laughs> Literally, Nathan's got splinters in his bum there because he's just sat on the fence that much. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm cautious. No, you're sitting on the fence. Don't tell lies. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you think of the racing so far, guys. If you are in the chat as well, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the bells because that would be absolutely amazing. A lot more racing coming up on the JBB YouTube channel this week as well. We've got a lot coming up tomorrow night. Don't forget, we've got the UK Sim Racers. They're back for round six from Road America. We've got the Almost Pro Championship round seven from Belgium. That's F1 23. And then later on in that evening, we've got the Tier 1s round six from Abu Dhabi. That's from the Press Prospects E-Racing League. That's also F1 23. And then we've got the BSC from Talladega. So, Dega. We're going to love a little bit of Dega. Then on Wednesday's round four for the JBB GT4s there at Spa Francochamp. Further on from that will be the Prospects Tier 2, round 7 from Saudi Arabia on the Wednesday night. Then we've got a Radical Race Series from round 6 from Mount Panorama where you'll see John McCutcheon and Luke Maxwell will show you how good they are in that one. So a lot of more racing coming up. We've got also got the TSRC round 2 GT3s on Thursday. That's from the Red Bull Ring and then the F4s from Oschersleben for the TSRC on Friday. Then we've got the WCCS around 7 from Monaco and then it goes into Sunday where we've got the Coffee Cups, the I-Formulas, the FTR events and the IGP and also the Sim Race for Simpletons round 3 will be on early Monday morning unless you're a night owl of course and you want to stay up and watch it. Commentators cuss? No. Doesn't exist. Doesn't yes. exist. No, it's accommodators. Can commentators coincidence and a skill <laughs> issue? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm taking that from Zach Sweeney. That's what he said. Uh, well, is it a surprise that Zach said that? No, mm. we, we, have, we have arguments about the commentators curse quite a lot. Yeah, because we've all got different opinions, and that's the thing. <laughs> some of us think we, <laughs> some of us think we've got it right, and some of us think we got it wrong. Who yeah. killed who? Well, Nathan killed David Clasper <laughs> in race two. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Said, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Clasper for the win, and he goes and gets it all wrong. Um, so Is it on the first lap as well. But it was, I believe, it was on the first lap on turn number two. To be blatantly honest, so there we go. Uh, but no, I'm not. We're we're going to sit on the fence. I'm not. Um, I'm not saying Clasper's going to win. Clasper's on pole. I think no. Ed, yeah, Clasper's on pole. I think alongside Edward. Edward's got Joe McCutcheon coming up behind him. Um, so yeah, gonna be an interesting one. <laughs> it will. Yes. But when it when it, when he's not it interesting here. Well, that's that the, is a question. That's the thing, you know. We know obviously the we're lower on numbers than normal, but to be fair. That hasn't really affected the racing at all this season. And the racing's just been absolutely exceptional through everything. And, and I think, um, yeah, I think it's going to continue to be blatantly honest because I don't think it's going to stop. The racing has just been absolutely exceptional all season. Coming to the end of the five minute warm up. And we will be able to bring you up the grid for race number three. Final race of the evening, full reverse grid. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried about how this is going to go, I've got to be honest. But let's see here. It will be Clasper on pole. So ignore the top two. Dan Lewis and Shugh Gibbons are, are not taken to the start. So it's David Clasper, Edward Parfit, John McCutcheon, Kian Palmer, Rob Williams, Ludovic Jure, Dylan DaCosta, Wayne Palmer, Chris Barnes, Kevin Anfield, Luke Maxwell, and Sam Van Olst. So fast guys at the back. Coming through, to be fair, I can't really say that in this season because they've all really been as quickly quick as each other. They have, yeah, they have indeed. And do we have um, Stuart Gibbons still with us, or did he depart? No, he's so, departed. I remember he went to the pit and he had to raise one. Yeah. So we'll have no Lewis and Gibbons on the grid then. No, right, okay. Well, no okay. Lewis and Gibbons. Uh, so it's Clasper, Clasper on pole. <laughs> yeah, Clasper on pole. Oh. Uh... Edward's getting a little bit of a blink on at the moment. I'm sure he'll be back and up and running shortly once he starts the race. For some reason, it does it on the grid. And then when he gets underway, it doesn't really do it. So, Weird. Yeah, it's not the first time, mate. And to be honest, I've seen that in lots of officials as well. Lights are going to be coming on. We've got one. We've got two. We've got three, four, five. Round uh, heat number three at Oran Park 
is underway. David Clasp has got the whole shot at the moment, going down into turn one. Parf is still holding on to second. Palmer's into holding on to fourth. Kian Palmer. McCutcheon is trying to come around the outside like an absolute banshee already he can smell the win could john mccutcheson can clasper hold on where well, he's held on for longer maxwell's off the grass he's off the grass in the background manages to hold it and get back on track and these guys still fighting out with ludovic jure not really getting away at the start here not entirely sure what's going on with ludovic jure this evening but john mccutcheson wow has just gone and cleared over parfait <laughs> and now it's mccutcheson and clasper going at it well Yet again, brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant scenes here in this race so far. Is that someone going well? That's Kian Palmer dropping down to 11. What's happened there? Whoa. Oh. Oh, no. Well, that answers it. Oh, he's gotten wide, hasn't he? Yeah. And he's gone. Oh. <laughs> I think he's took a trip into the wall. Oh. Wow. Kian Palmer there. <laughs> um, not ideal. <laughs> is now out out but david clasper and john mccutcherson continue their fight edward's got dylan da costa maxwell's coming into contact in the background chris barnes chris barnes oh well that was exceptional um hmm. well <laughs> this is one way of doing another it. one yeah watch yeah he gets contact holds it one way holds it the other Holds it again, and then just a little love tap on the wall. I wonder what that looked like from the inside of Chris Barnes's car, because I reckon that was quite spectacular, to be fair, as he comes around the final corner. There's contact with Mac, uh, Mac, uh, Maxwell. Goes the other way. Full lock it again. Full lock it again. Just taps the wall. That's not a bad ending to what could have been absolute disaster. Yeah, yeah. It could have been a lot worse than it was. Indeed, and for now, we've only got 10 runners left in this race. And Cusper still leads ahead of McHutchison and Parfit in third, looking to try and take a podium here for the JPB Esports team. And I'm sure James secretly is gunning on from here, isn't he? No, I don't show any, <laughs> any preference whatsoever towards him. When he's been a plonker, I tell him he's been a plonker. When he does something well, <laughs> I tell him he does something well. So no preferential treatment here whatsoever, despite the rumours. It does not get preferential treatment. <laughs> if, he's, if he's been an absolute plonker at times, I go down there and I tell him he's been an absolute plonker. But there we go. But he is at the moment holding on well. So can he... Oh, gee whiz, Dylan. Where are you coming oh. from, son? Coming from a long way back there. Dear Dylan the Costa. Edward's going to have the inside now. So let's see if he can hold on to it. Or did the Costa just get the speed? Uh, well. he, yeah. He did. Clasper and McCutcheson still going side by side. Parvin and DaCosta still going side by side in the background. You can see them there. As there is De Costa, uh, there is Clasper, there is McCutcheson, there is Parfit, there is De Costa. This front battle, 2v2 at the moment. Um, yes, McCutcheson did make it through. Yes, Dylan De Costa did make it through. And now Edwards got Sam Vanols for company. Yeah, Sam Vanols there. A very good run as they head their way through into all the next couple of corners here. Can we see Vanols with a move? He's looking to close in here, but couldn't quite do it at. The times are has to back out for now, and Luke Maxwell looking to also gain into that battle as we can see. Here, Casper up from the rear of Dustin here, looking to fight for the lead, and so far looking like that could be the lead done and dusted here for David Clasper, as we can see as well. Luke Maxwell making move ahead of Edward Parfit, and they're looking to gain in on the back of Sam Van Olst. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I think you're a bit premature. I, I do think you're a bit premature with the whole it's done and dusted. I think that's a that's a a little bit harsh because I Clasper was quick this is what I don't get yeah. qualifying he had pace and there was yeah I don't know and I, I, it's a shame it's, it's just amazing how sometimes the nights kind of happen but I was just going side by side with Maxwell they've just gone round the shell corner coming into champion curve Maxwell's gonna have the inside Edwards trying to follow Maxwell through not a bad idea there so I'd probably do the same thing to be blatantly honest not gonna make it through this time around and there is Edward there is Sam and Alston there is Maxwell see Clasper's not giving up Nath. you I think you're a little bit premature Maybe I was. You know, there is still 16 minutes left to go here at the moment. And Casper is looking to try and get himself back into the lead. But behind is Dylan Da Costa looking to get himself also in a position to fight for the lead of this race. As they 
head their way through out of the final corner back down towards turn number one De Costa's gaining in so is Klasper and well Klasper's got a he's got a difficult position of attacking and defending at the same time here never easy and I say that in the nicest possible way it's never ever easy to be able to do that you've got to look forward as well as looking backwards and at the moment Clasper's doing a great job De Costa's going to try and send it up the inside watch the gap mate because it will be closing all day didn't make that move this time around which is great because it would have ended up in disaster now he's going to try and go up the inside of Champions Curve not making it through this time either over Yokohama Bridge all the while this is happening Maxwell's opening up a little bit by bit by bit by bit Van Olsen and his there and he's battling away with McCutcheonson at the moment. So Sam Van Nolst there with Maxwell, sorry, as he's trying to close in. But Clasper and De Costa almost side by side. Yep, so head their way through up the hill once more. And yet again, this is the corner here where we see many people dip it in the gravel. And luckily, these two are making it through safe and sound at the moment as they head their way through and towards the final corner. And we'll see can Clasper defend that P2 once more. Um, six minutes in to this race, about 14 left to go. And Clasper under pressure here from Dylan De Costa, who has been in a bit of contact a few times so far this evening. So we'll see what these two can get up to as they head into turn one and turn number two. Where does De Costa place the cart? To the inside, Clasper goes to the outside to defend it. Can he get it done? No, he can't. Dylan De Costa, though, will have a good exit. We'll try and bring it side by side as that will be Van uh, Maxwell. They're going a little bit deep out of turn two. Yeah, Williams is in to the pit lane. I think it might have something to do with this. What did he do? Oh, dear sir. Completely missed your breaking point. And unfortunately, he goes into the tire, dam tire barrier. That's going to be damage on Williams' car. Now, Clasper still holding on. McCutcheonson opening up 1.3 at the moment. Samba Nolst is slowly getting in to Luke Maxwell. Maxwell slowly catching up De Costa as well. So right little ding-dongs happening all the way through the field and still happening here as well. Indeed, it's so head through and towards the final corner once more and we'll see what can De Costa do this time around. Looking to close in here on the rear of David Clasper, looking to try and take P2 away as they head down to turn one this time. A very good run here from Dylan De Costa. Pulls it to the inside, keeps it to the inside into turn one and turn two. Can he get the move? Complete breaks later, a lot later. Clasper onto the gravel uh, prematurely into turn two and De Costa does get the move done and now into P2. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Clasper's going to give up. Surely he can't give up. He's got to keep fighting. He's got 12 minutes. He had the pace. The problem is, is if he gets grabbed into Luke Maxwell, he's going to be in even more trouble. And unfortunately for him, Maxwell isn't no slouch. You know what I mean? In these cars, he's, he's done well over the last few seasons and brought the car, got the car under wraps. He, 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 when he first come in, he was avoiding door banging. He was avoiding all contact whatsoever. He's used to driving an SR10. And if anybody's driven an SR10, you'll know they're made out of cardboard. So one slight little bit of contact does horrendously get you damaged. But now Maxwell's into the Clio's. He knows he can put them side by side. He knows he can send it up in places as well. Get a little bit of a door bang. And he knows he can make it work. And I think for him, that's m the mental transition that he's had to make over the last last two seasons yeah it's definitely something that you know the drivers have to consider especially when you know you've got so many different cars so many different tracks and also many different grids as well you know that's somehow i don't know how but it does have an impact on the drivers doesn't it when they're driving against different people whether they're the people have um, battled with before or people they have never battled with before as that was class but they're going very deep into turn two and well nearly making slight contact there with De Costa as we could see Edward Parfit in the background blinking around as he heads his way out of turn two. Yeah, uh, he'll be all right. He'll settle down, no doubt. He has settled down. He's back on the racetrack. There he is there uh, again. Hopefully by the second week in May. It should be very fast fibre optic. <laughs> I, I pray for that moment. I don't know, like what, to be honest. I can't think of a good analogy, but I pray like absolute crazy that it is the second week in May. <sighs> so looking forward to that. I'm sure they'll find a way to delay it, surely. Thanks, mate. I'd, 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 I'd rather they didn't, but you know what I mean? I would hope, but, well, <laughs> yeah, no. internet. 
I've been, I've been told, I've been told that, you know, it's coming. So I'm, I'm living on the prayer at the moment. Well, hopefully it comes soon and then it can make your life and um, Edward's life a lot easier when racing and broadcasting. I, I agree. I do fully agree. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. It's amazing how much internet plays a part in what we do online with sim racing, with broadcasting, with everything. And, and the internet just plays a massive part of it all. And if you're, you're out where I am, where there's more sheep than humans, you, you can't get great internet. But we've had the Rural Broadband Company, I won't tell you the name because we're not sponsored or anything by them, who have said that they will come and fit Wi-Fi and fiber optic. So it'd be 900 up, 900 down. That's the hope, Naif. That's the Ooh, hope. That's a, nice, that's a nice improvement, isn't it? That is very nice, isn't it? My, we got upgraded to about 500, and believe me, it feels a lot nicer not having to worry about internet. I agree. A lot nicer. I agree. When we 56 meg at the moment, screams at me on a Monday night. <laughs> we're, both, we're both of us are out here as well. And the constant messages from the other two sons. Dad, I've got 300 ping. I'm like, I don't know what that means for you. Well, <laughs> never mind. Crack on. You'll be all right. As David Clasper's hanging on to that third place. Maxwell just can't get near him at the moment. And I'm surprised at the pace that Maxwell had as to why he can't get near him. But he just can't seem to get close enough to make the overtake no and and that's an issue he has because Clasper we know is quick so he can defend as well which is what makes it even worse for Maxwell as he nearly takes out the rear of Clasper as they head into turn three and the issue that Maxwell has now is Sam Van Olt is also looking to close in and get involved in this little battle for P4 and P3 but that's the only issue Maxwell's got really here isn't it he's got Van Olt closing in very quickly behind yes Clasper being a little bit of a cork, but it's driving absolutely amazingly to hold on. Williams has just cleared Barnes. Now, that's an inter-cracking racing championship. I wonder what went on there. How did Williams at get past Barnes? Well, it looks like Barnes has actually got a slowdown, and that's going to allow Williams to come through. So that would be taking the last corner a little bit too early and giving Chris Barnes a slowdown. David Clasper just had a little bit of a blink. Luke Maxwell there still trying to close in on him. Just can't get close. I don't, don't know if Maxwell's got damage and it's hurting his top speed, but Clasper's almost pulling away on the street. Yeah, he is, and... Well, Maxwell has to send it, doesn't he? Has to send it there. Has to back out, though. And I think he's now just trying to kind of scare Clasper into a couple of the corners, making him go a little bit wide by sending a bit of a silly move, as that will be there. Parfit dropping back behind Palmer. So to piece it goes Wayne Palmer now, ahead of Edward Parfit. Let's see what happened here. Down to turn one and two. Does Edward go a little bit wide? He does into the gravel. A little bit similar to what John McCutcheon did, wasn't it, earlier on? Mm, he did, unfortunately, for the boy there. Needs to watch them off tracks. He got a drive through in the last race for them. He's got six minutes to hold on now. This circuit is tough on off tracks, but it's only tough if you start trying to cut the corners. And unfortunately for Edward, he's learning that they can't quite do it. Barnes and Williams having a right little ding dong. Barnes is literally pushing Williams down the straight as they come into the sweeper. <laughs> now he's locked up. God, if they crash into each other, that's going to be a sight and a half, isn't it? Both of the cracking racing boys spinning off ceremoniously here. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Well, they make it through for now, and they're fine. We'll see when Barnes can get the move ahead of his teammate for P9 in the race. And these two, I'm sure they'll give it lots of um, lots of battling because they know they're together. They're probably together in the VC, aren't they, here, these two? Mm. Having a little bit of a battle for the same team of course and Barnes eager to get through and Williams but Rob Williams not moving one bit at all no he's not but Barnes is clear he's had pace as well so I'm interested to see if, if if Barnes just decides to go for it or whether or not he sits there and holds on at the moment he's dropped back a little bit Mas Maxwell still fighting out with Clasper five minutes remaining they're going over the bridge as we've got eighth place there of Ludovic Jure coming under the bridge with Wayne Palmer and um, is there. Edward Parfit's trying to close on behind him as he's trying to come back through and recover from his incident. Barnes and Williams still going at it. And Maxwell still there with David Clasper. He just cannot make it through. Yeah, and well, it's like what we saw from, uh, from Wayne Palmer, isn't it? Just defence. If you can place your car into the correct position, there's no way at all 
anyone is getting through on you at all. All Maxwell's got to do is just send it late. He's got to get moving. Clasper goes deep, though, doesn't he? Hits a wall. Then Maxwell goes to the inside line, looking to try and take P3 away from David Clasper as they head down to turn one. He's been waiting laps and laps and laps for this now as he pulls, hopefully, back to the outside to complete the move as they head down into turn one and turn two. And Maxwell is into P3 ahead of David Clasper as there. That was Dylan De Costa going oh! very deep, and Maxwell goes deep as well into turn two. No! All that hard work has gone poof. <laughs> but that's pretty it. Much. Pretty much it has, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, I can't deny it. <laughs> All that hard work for Luke Maxwell has just gone out the window. That's it. Yeah. Nothing he could well, have done. Back to, the, back to the drawing board. He's going to have to go again, isn't he? He's got seven off. He's got four minutes. Again, we're going to be close whether or not we're going to have a last lap. Barney's taking the night off. He said, well, the, he said to me, he said, the track's a car park, James. I don't need to be there, so I'm not going to show up. And so far, <laughs> he actually hasn't shown up for the last two races either, Barney. So that would be a quick message to HR there to see where Barney's at. But clearly, he's taking the night off. So we're trying to work this one out whether or not it's going to be the last lap in about two minutes' time, I think. We'll get to find out, but yeah, it'd be nice if Barney was here, wouldn't it? It'd be nice if he, you know, we popped back, even if it's for the final race, it's a finale race. <laughs> yeah, it would be really nice for Barney to show up, I'm not going to lie, but he, he just doesn't seem to want to be there. But Maxwell, he's there, he's with Van Alst. He cleared Klaas Burrows in front in the red and blue. He, unfortunately for Klaas, well, fortunately for Klaas, but Maxwell then got it all wrong and just overcooked it coming down into turn two, ran wide, that allowed Clasper but through. The Costa's not really getting any closer to John McCutcheon other than the 1.2, 1.3 that it has been for pretty much most of this race. But Maxwell is the one who can make a difference at the moment. He's got Sam yep. Van in front of him, but also he's also been another quick one race winner again this evening. He has, yeah. The, you know, so far this um, this evening, the, the the pace has been very close. I'd say probably the closest it's been, um, you know, on a whole this season. It's been brilliant to see everyone really fighting for positions and having to really fight for it in many rounds. Max, you know, Maxwell had easily passed, but in this race, he, it's been very hard for him to try and make moves ahead of people who aren't always at that ultimate top pace. As we can see, Maxwell here looking to gain into turn one and turn two. Not going to be close enough here. Now, the question is, can he make it into the braking zone if he can break a little bit later than Sam Van Ols, who, of course, um, was our championship leader. I believe now it might be Dylan De Costa, though, at this point. Yeah, I think De Costa might have it, but I also believe De Costa's probably got a penalty incoming from ra race number one. Maxwell trying to go around the outside of Shell Corner on that run now down into champion curve. The right-hander goes in... Now through under Yokohama. Maxwell has got damage on that front end. He's almost looks like he's hit a pole as Luke Maxwell. There it is. Look, a little bit of an indent on the front of that. Cleo, I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to look like a U on the front. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. I think there's a bit of damage there on the car. As they head their way through the hill once more. And Maxwell on the rear of Sam Van Ols once again, but yet again, just can't find a way past. He had the same with class, but he's got the same now with Maxwell. Um, with Van Al, sorry. This is going to be the final lap, everybody, because Barney again has taken the night off. He's not anywhere on the podium. He's not anywhere on One the right-hand side. Oh, he's all the way over there. He's behind the traffic light. On the on the left is Barney this time. Um, we'll have a look on Ludovic Jure. He's all the way to the left-hand side. So he's not completely taking the night off. If you look for the traffic light, believe it or not, there's a man behind that waving frantically. There we go. Oh, there he is. He's a, well, it's a bit out of the way, isn't it? That You can barely see him from there. Exactly. But Luke Maxwell, Sam and Ols now going side by side around Shell Corner. Maxwell's going to look for the exit. Manages to keep it on track. Through champion curve, he's going to go. Clasper's hanging on to that top three at the moment as John McCutcheon should come through 
and take the win. I say that loosely as Maxwell's just about to go into Foster's dip. Still alongside San Bernal, still not getting the job done. Into Momo now these guys go. The leaders are coming around the final corner. We'll have a look at them very, very shortly. Maxwell still trying as best as he can, but it is going to be McCutchinson coming over the line. It is going to be Dylan DaCosta in second. Clasper's going to wrap up third. What's happening with San Bernal to Luke Maxwell? Maxwell cannot get through. He cannot get through. Sambanos comes over the line. Palmer's going to come over in front of Parfit as well. Nothing doing there. Ludovic Jure is going to come over in ninth. And then we've got ninth and tenth of Chris Barnes and Rob Williams, who have just been battling each other all the way through the race. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's been a brilliant race, hasn't it? Um, for many cars having their little battles. As Jure comes home in P8. And then it'll be Barnes and Williams, of course, to round off the top ten of the grid. And all of our finishers here tonight in the final round, of, uh, in the final heat. And I've got to say, they have got to be the best three races I think we've had this season. Brilliant action from start to end. I do agree. I do agree. There is Chris Barnes uh, in front of Williams as he comes through the O'Brien aluminium dogleg. Then round Ricaro gets it all wrong. Williams, oh, come on, Rob. You could have been upside alongside him at that moment in time. Surely... Surely, ah, oh, photographic finishing between the graphic, but I did crack it, boys, there as well. It was like watching Le Mans 66 with the Fords coming over the line together. <laughs> well, maybe not quite as sentim oh. sentimental as that, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think quite as much, James. No, <laughs> maybe a little bit far off. Yeah, maybe. Right, is it going to come over? Here is the feature results. John McCutcheon is your winner with Dylan DeCosta in second. David Clasper in third. Sam Olst in fourth with Luke Maxwell fifth. Wayne Palmer sixth. Edward Parfit in seventh. Ludovic Jure's in eighth. Chris Barnes ninth. Then we're going to have Rob Williams in tenth, the last of the finishers. And we lost Kim Palmer. Dan Lewis didn't start with Stuart Gibbons. Kevin Hanfield didn't start. Unfortunately, could not complete the third race due to life, um, unfortunately, for him. Obviously, it's probably about daytime now in Australia, where he is. We have got John McCutcheon waiting for us for a chat there as well. John, welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm good, James. How are you? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. I've just watched some great racing, some great little battling. I've watched a few bits of contact. You know, yeah, very argy, yeah, yeah, a bit argy bargy out there tonight. Uh, elbows out, I think. It was a, it was a cry tonight. Um, some of it just, some of it not. The stewards will have a busy week this week, I think. I think so too, especially when they come out and praised everybody last week for saying how clean it was. Um, yeah, we're, no. co we're coming into Oran Park, a little bit messy. Two podiums for you one win one second so that's not a bad evening but a rough race too yeah at least i say about that the better you know i think i played my part in the first contact but i didn't appreciate what happened you know there's a there's a middle pedal in the car for a reason mm, uh, and yes it, and when he turns his wheel to the right to come across your track well kind of a looks deliberate doesn't look good on him put it that way OK, well, I'm sure the stewards will do their part, John, you know, um, and hopefully we'll see what happens coming out of that. Where do you see yourself, mate, this season? You're sitting in temp for the moment. You're about 120 points back. Can you can you make that difference, do you think? Well, that's me beat Big Swifty tonight, so I've got a chance now, I think. Getting, <laughs> the, hang, get, <laughs> getting the hang of the car, getting the brakes a bit better. <laughs> just the slow stuff I'm I still struggle and the fast corners are looking okay but so, I'll get there yeah, I'll but... try my best Mate, you'll do, you'll do it at the end of the day. It's different to what you're normally in, so at least you're giving it a good old go, and that's all that matters, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? Great. It's going to be one of them sort of seasons, a learning season. Going off to Winton Raceway next week. You ever been there, John? Where? Winton Raceway. <laughs> I hope that's free because I haven't never heard of it. I think it is. Is that an oval? No, it's not an oval. Oh, it's a and, it's a, you, no. No. a new one. I never heard of it. It is a new one. Hold on. I'm uh, sure it is, it, is, it is. Yeah, it is. Well, I haven't never bought it, and it's telling me I've got it. Um, no, never heard of it. Never heard of it. So, okay. Australia. 
Yeah, another one in Australia, mate. So you don't have to travel very far. Uh, okay. It's a new it's circuit. A yeah, it is a big country. New circuit, though, mate. I think you might have to um, get some practice in. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it on Tuesday. I'll do it on Monday. <laughs> a couple of hours will do me. I used a couple of hours right at the beginning to do, to do yeah. it there as well. Well, well done, fella. Look, you know, let's take the positives. Race one and race three. We'll ignore race two. Um, anyone you want to shout out, John, before we let you go? No, I, uh, shout out to you guys for the broadcast as usual. It's always good to watch back. Okay, bud. Well, have a good time, mate, and um, I'll see you Thursday. Thanks, James. Take Cheers, care, bye. mate. Bye bye. All right, well, next up in the booth is, is the man that's just been nicknamed Big Swifty by his teammate. <laughs> it's, it's I quite like that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can take it so many ways, Luke, but we really know the truth where that name's come from. So, <laughs> Yeah, but we can, we, can, we can invent some better ways, can't we? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give it some thought. <laughs> You better come up with a backstory, mate. A lie only works if you can tell the truth. Listen, an eventful evening, right? You know, race one. Yes. Race two was good. Race three just couldn't get past Clasper. Then you got past him, and then you did a little bit of an oopsie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I binned it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was a, right. yeah, it was just, just, a, just a mistake there. I should have... You know, I think he was going to give me the corner, so I should I should have been a bit uh, steadier going in, but just lost lost it, couldn't get it stopped in time, and uh, yeah, I think just taking a slightly different line cost me there. I couldn't couldn't get it stopped in time like I could on on my normal line. So um, yeah, you know, it's okay. It, I think I didn't really maximise my pace tonight overall. Uh, I thought I could have had race one. Um, yeah, I think Dylan Dylan apologised. He was too late on the brakes there, really, and uh, and sort of turned me, and it couldn't I couldn't get back on track. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I ended up dropping back a bit there. But um, race race two is is tough, tough, tough place to pass. So you know, it's uh, it's hard work. Even you know, everybody in the field's obviously taking their line, and you you know, you've got to be a bit aggressive without being too aggressive and trying to trying to make it work. So um, yeah, good 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 fun though. I was I was quite pleased overall. Well done, well done for John for the win. Uh, race three as well. Yeah, how is the aggression going, Luke? Because we know, you know, you've been learning that side of the Cleos. Well, I don't know. I, I was I was cautious tonight because I don't want to pick up any more penalties. Um, so I've got to be a bit sensible. But it's it's difficult. You've got to kind of get, make sure. It's hard because the, the car's so, um, yeah, the rear end can be very, like, uh, twisty on the brakes. So you've got to be a bit careful. Um, you know, you kind of, I was kind of making time on people into turn one, but try not to go too extreme. But, uh, yeah, a couple of them did. They went a bit deep and then you could get on the power early up the inside. And I think I made a couple of passes that way. But uh, yeah, it was it was tricky for sure. And I think I think generally the aggression's probably OK. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we just watched a contact with you and Chris Barnes and Chris sending the car sideways three times and managed to save it there in race three. But, you know. Yeah, he seemed, he seemed slow on that one. I don't know if I... I didn't leave enough space, probably not on the on the exit there. So, um, but I could see he was going to be slow and just trying to get on the power. But uh, yeah, I think we kind of just went into each other there. So uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, a bit damage to the car as well, I guess uh, after that. So um, yeah, it was all right. I had I had enough pace to to try and get past those guys, but mm. you know, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. It definitely was there, buddy. Well, well done anyway for your great evening in points. See where you finish off. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Um, no. No, we'll leave it tonight. <laughs> okay, bud. Right, have a good one, mate, and we'll catch up with you. Yeah. I'll see you Thursday. Cheers, boys. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Cheers. Take care, mate. Bye. Well, there you go. They seem quite happy, considering John was very cryptic in the, yeah. his wording for race two. Um, the stewards are obviously going to have a look at it, right? And I expect them yeah. to. That's why, obviously, they're stewards. Dean deliberate by John. Do we think... That was the case. The mm. Costa was going backwards. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was a, you know, if he's been taken out, I think you, you know, you're, of course, you're going to be a little bit more annoyed about it. So I think we'll see what happens. 
OK, well, that's Nathan again sitting on the fence with splinters in his bottom, everyone oh. here on JBB. <laughs> All right, that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. As you've seen, it's been a very eventful race free. Don't forget, guys, if you want to get yourselves involved in the league, you can. The JPB Discord link is down in the description below. If you want to come along, join us for anything that you want. We've got Clio's. We've got GT4s. We've got NASCAR trucks coming. That's almost full at the moment. We're nearly at capacity for the NASCAR trucks, so if you want to come and do that. If you fancy yourself as a bit of a Dale Earnhardt Jr. and you want to run some full-length life, full length NASCAR that starts in the beginning of May, come and get yourselves involved in the Discord as well because there's still places available for that one. But lots going on, as always is, on here on the JBB YouTube channel. Look at the videos for the upcoming and you will see when and where we're going to be. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the bells. But for now, guys, I've been James Parfit. I've been alongside Nathan Richards again for the evening evening and as always take care have a great week and you never know we might see you on a track sometime good night <laughs>